or escort me to the security office which was on campus. And by the way, there was a security office on campus and on every campus and one to two people in every classroom watching the rest of us. And sometimes an entire show would disappear. I would come back to the gallery and there is none left of the show. Um, and then I have to go and be interrogated for an entire day day, answering the regime questions and the nature of the show. Uh, unfortunately, uh, fortunately, uh, abstract work become, it has this duality when we could just say, no, it doesn't mean this, it means uh, this. And describe how and why you left Iraq. So the last thing, uh, the last trouble I got into the regime of Saddam, it was 1990, when Saddam invaded uh, Kuwait. And at that year, in the fall of the year, uh, the regime come to schools to asking us to volunteer uh, to go to Kuwait uh, and fight. I was one of the students who uh, was uh, who disagreed, and but I was the one and with other people who stood and said, "No, I don't believe this. I am not going to volunteer." And I know. From that moment, I was blacklisted, and I had to be on the run. So I started running from um, Baghdad, made it to Najaf, and that's now 91, when an uprising took place after the Gulf War. Um, and during that uprising, unfortunately, the United States gave uh, the green light for Saddam to crush the uprising. And again, I was on the move, and I did not stop until I reached uh, the border with Kuwait, uh, when um, I stayed there with uh, American troops for 45 days, before I was transferred to Saudi Arabia refugee camp for two years. Uh, and fortunately, after that, I was able to come to the United States. So a lot of it, it was a lot of the work. Um, of the early period uh, in the United States, uh, reflective of my disenchantment uh, with Saddam regime, but also with American government and how they kept an eight year or more an embargo on Iraqi people, which destroyed what, what, whatever left after the uh, Kuwait war. Would you describe yourself as a political artist? I think all art is political. It's just a matter of what we are meditating on. Even the fact that is a person uh, refused to do political art, that is a political move. Uh, and I think it depends where we are. Um, uh, and what I mean by that, art is meditation. You could meditate on aesthetic, but also you could meditate on pain. And unfortunately, I'm not privilege or in a position to meditate on aesthetic when I could withdraw myself from the political um, dialogue to my studio and I meditate on aesthetic. So until that change, I am, I have to engage myself and others during art in the political dialogue, which is very necessary. And how do you see the role of art more generally, both in Iraq? growing up under Saddam Hussein in Iraq today and, um, and now in the United States? Art is a powerful medium. Uh, engage people. And I think that's what we need, you know. Uh, it depends. And uh, it really it doesn't matter what medium you decide to use. I think the objective is to engage people. But now, more than ever, um, artists uh, have a lot more powerful tools to play with since the playing field has been leveled. And what I mean by that, art does not have to be uh, confined to a physical space, the gallery or museums, but now we have the power of the internet when we could enter people, homes and offices and engage them in the dialogue. Art is not only there to educate. Art is there is to agitate as well. Iraqi American artist Wafa Bilal. You can watch the art display at wafabilal.com. That does it for our broadcast. I'll be in Tufts in Medford, Massachusetts today at six. I'm in